This is Joseph Coco. I'm at IMTAC 2019 on behalf of Becky Hilburn's YouTube channel. If you could introduce yourself, Emmy. Hello everyone, my name is Emmy Main. My uh, business is called Lightning and Lace. I do primarily work with laser cutting. We also do embroidery, dye sublimation, UV printing, and resin cast and hand sculpted things. Fantastic. So we have our custom booth here. We've made this from scratch. We did all the LED work and we yeah. have all of our items on magnets. So That's can, super convenient. Yeah, we can change products out. People definitely are going to want to pick it up and touch it and oh, things yeah. like that. So it will come free, but it's not going to shake loose if someone bumps right. into the table. And sometimes we have people say like, oh no, I broke it. And I said, no, no, it's fine. It's on the map. <laughs> so yeah. super convenient. Okay. Uh, and what got you started um, uh, doing this type of uh, like handcrafted but professionally made things. A lot of people come to the artist alley and it's not that they don't have high production values, but uh, it seems like you've invested in quite a bit of equipment to right. do these sort of things, whereas other people would just outsource it. Uh, how did you approach, um, did, did you start outsourcing it or did you start from the beginning trying to make everything yourself? So I went to a college, I went to Auburn for industrial design and I can sort of see this on the horizon at my local anime college where people were getting the charms printed or they were getting the custom things. Uh, but we actually had a laser in-house which taught me a lot of how to make this and how to set it up and taught me what I could do. Yeah. So then there were sites like Pinoco, which is wonderful if you want to get your own stuff cut but you can't always print and you can't always get things and fix them on the fly. So eventually I wanted to get my own equipment. So I have a Trotec Speedy 300 laser okay. and I do everything in house. And, and I you have wanted... like a workshop for that or that's in your actual yes. house? <laughs> okay. Um, currently we are at the Low Mill in mm -hmm. Huntsville, Alabama. Low Mill Arts and Entertainment. And it's an old cotton mill that they've renovated into artist studios. And it is currently the largest privately owned artist collective facility in the United States. Second only oh, wow. to, uh, it's based on the Torpedo Factory in Washington, D.C. So old Torpedo Factory renovated into artist spaces. So yes, we have the equipment there. Yep. So I do all of the sublimation work, uh, the press sublimation. I, we have a, a space for doing resin. And the sublimation is transferring like things onto these mugs, for instance? Correct, the yep. sublimation. Sublimation is a project, oh, sorry, is a process where the dye is turned from a solid to a gas, sublimation, mm -hmm. uh, and, and actually- And it's just on like these sheets, basically, right? Yes, you can print it with the specific inks with the printer, but you have to have the heat presses in order to basically impregnate the substrate with the ink. So these are uh, our mugs that we do for six minutes at about 360 degrees and they're coated with a specific polyester coating. Sublimation wants to go into anything that's plastic or really polyester. So you can do polyester shirts, you can do um, small fabrics. Some processors are used by things, by people like Spoonflower and you can do custom fabric, you can do flat stuff, you can do charms though the material for that I have to put through the CNC and I'm not quite there yet but okay. every day I get a little bit more, you know, get Figuring something else to, yeah, yeah, which I love. Okay, so is, uh, how do you, you have quite a bit of of products here and it seems like you've really catered your display to maximize like yes. the beauty of the products and the simplicity they have great silhouettes so you can recognize them from far away how do you go about like experimenting with a design like uh, it do you do you mock it up on a computer or do you just start drawing things like yes. if you if you want to release a new product uh, is it because people have been asking you about it? You know, like wh where does where does where do you start with this? I sort love of? when people bring me the things that they want to have. When someone tells me, "Oh, I really like this thing. Can you make that?" I say yes, and I never thought about that. Or sometimes I think about it, but it's so far down on my list that it takes me a while to get to it. Yeah. So I really love sort of the magical girl 
and bringing the, the sparkly into my designs, I'll typically do a mock-up on Illustrator, which is a wonderful program. My uh, laser actually runs off of the vector cut paths and etches from Illustrator. Okay. So if it's a path, I can cut it. Yeah. But besides having the materials on hand and knowing sort of what they look like, I'll mock it up and I have little images of the Swarovski crystals that I use and I, I'll arrange those in a file so I know what I need to get. But as far as the display, like I really love that this takes the sparkle and it takes the colors of things up a lot because yeah. that's so hard to convey. Sometimes on we sell on Etsy. Yeah. So Etsy, while you can have 10 images now, you can't quite get that sparkle shine. Yeah. So. Are you hiring a professional photographer or you're doing it yourself? So. No, I'm doing it myself. Um, we've been... I mean, I'm not surprised considering you're doing everything else yourself. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I want to up my photography game a little bit. I've yeah. had a light box for a while, but sometimes I feel like it's hit or miss. You know, sometimes I have my camera set up, sometimes I want to get something up real quick, so I do it with my phone camera, and I'm like, oh, that's okay, but I should really go back and do that. Uh, once we, we were actually planning on building a larger studio at our house, and once wow. we have that, I'm gonna have a dedicated light box space. So I'll have the camera set up all the time, connected to the computer. But nice. sometimes it can be really hard to get that nice photography when the light changes or your phone wants to lose battery, all sorts of stuff. So it's tough, but yeah, we do it ourselves. Okay. Um, so this is this is your, what, third year doing MTAC or uh, second? I, this is my second year doing MTAC. Uh, we took a year off last year, so the last time you were here was 2017. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we're back, and this is the first time that we've had this setup. At yeah, this it definitely looks new to me. So, um, so how hard was it? Uh, I assume you drove here from Huntsville. It wouldn't necessarily be worth it to fly. Um, how hard is it to like transport this type of thing? Um, most of Becca's setup and other artists we've talked to have had very uh, modular sort of systems. Right. Usually the grids, either the tall display grids or the small squares. We use the grids for years and the grids are wonderful. Mm -hmm. They have a ton of functionality because you can put things everywhere. Uh, we are <laughs> thankfully we have a big car, big enough car that we can fit this whole setup as well as all the products and our luggage into it. Okay. Currently that does limit us, limit us just a little bit. We're yeah. doing a lot of the southeast cons. We're trying to get up to the northeast a little bit. I'd love to do shows out like in California or way up in Maine. But, but it's impractical to drive and you right. have to develop a whole new display system. Like Chicago with nine hours is about our limit right now. And yeah. we're doing that mainly for like Pogo Fest. So eventually I would love to either have this in a way that I can pack it up and ship it and get it there or pack it up and put it in a trailer and carry more stuff and take a two-day car trip or have something similar that when I do go to a very far convention I can just unpack and it's still the same feel and the brand and the showcasing of the products but it's tough but it's definitely it's worth it when you have things that you want to show and people really respond to it so it's nice. Okay. So I know you do a lot of design for other artists. Yes. Um, uh, they would give you raw files, basically, and just, just have a discussion with you about uh, the types of products that they'd like to have made. Um, do you also do, like, display work for yes. other artists? Yes. Yeah, we do anything from we woodwork. Um, so we can do, like, custom cabinetry. We can do custom displays. You can say, I need a thing that's my colors made out of wood with acrylic fronts and I want my brand on it yeah. and we would love to hear some crazy cool ideas. Yeah, cause... printing on strange things oh, or yeah. having strange things laser cut and all that. And that's one of the good things about having this business and doing what I do because <laughs> I love the brand new and the different. So when something comes up and I say, oh, I can make that or have, I have a design for that, I just have to go to my equipment and say, bam, here it is. So I love to see that new and the fun and the like something that I, I thought of that no one else has or someone thought of that I would never think of and I'd love to play and experiment with that. Okay.
And uh, what kind of materials can you work with if someone was interested in in uh, getting some uh, products made? So most of my pieces, since I do everything in house, I try to keep it to acrylic and wood. Yeah. So that is um, profile cutting as well as detail cutting and etching on top. So I have, for instance, this necklace has a wood and since I cut it from the back, I'm able to add my logo and then I can add the colored pieces on top. I do have a company that is like direct in my town, so I have direct contact with them and I did a run of um, the printed acrylic charms. So this yeah. is a, a color and then a white and a color again, so it makes it double sided. But if people want some, typically I like acrylics and I like woods. And if you wanted things like mugs, the mugs start white, so I can put your art on products. Yeah. And that is expanding every day. We have mouse pads, we have Christmas ornaments, we have <laughs> mugs, we have shot glasses. Like we typically bring the mugs because we have the mug press and we can do things at con. So I know if something wow. if something sells out and I have the papers for and it. And you can just produce can more. more. Yeah. 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 That's pretty impressive. That's not something that I would have guessed. Thank so. you. Yeah, and I go to cons all over the Southeast. So if someone orders something from me, uh, if we're going to be at the same con, I can drop it off to them. Mm -hmm. It's really convenient. But so if someone did want to talk to you about this, uh, in person would probably be best. But obviously, people aren't necessarily going to be at the same cons as you. So would they email you? Do you have information on your website about it? Email is probably the best. My email is lightning and lace shop at gmail.com yeah so that's l-i-g-h-t-n-i-n-g and lace shop at gmail.com you have no idea how many people put an e right in the middle of that and it becomes lightening and it's like oh that's okay <laughs> but yeah that we're also on etsy if you wanted to contact me just quickly over there yeah etsy facebook but email is definitely the best way to get in contact with me Okay. Yeah. And uh, you do more than just jewelry, even though that's a lot of what you have displayed here. So if people have bigger pieces that they're interested in creating, or maybe like cosplay embellishments or things like that, yes. you can do those as well, we right? We also do like, resin casting, and we can also take things that you have and do molds of them. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with a bunch of different materials. This one here is... Uh, the Smoothcast 300 from Smoothcast, two-part resin into a mold. I have to talk about these pieces. We have these here today, so if people want to get them and finish them themselves, it's a really good option. Yeah, super cute. Yeah, but we do uh, resin SLA printing. We have FDM if you want just something that's going to be functional or fast. Uh, we can print in a bunch of different materials and. Um, Clay Williams over here of Mastermind Models and Miniatures, my counterpart. He is also a professional miniatures painter, and we oh, wow. we love to um, paint professional props for people too. So you know, from sewing to embroidery to uh, large props to small props, we'd love to hear some new ideas. Awesome. Yeah. So whether it's a few one-off things or a large batch of items, right. you can pretty well accommodate people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh, we talked about where we can find you online, the types of products you have. Um, can we also find these products if we wanted to buy some from your store yes. on the same website? Yes. Uh, I'm constantly trying to get more things online. So something, sometimes things will be at a show. Yeah, that isn't necessarily and, up yet. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yes, most uh, everything is online. And again, if you saw it at a show or you've seen it and it's not online, drop me a line and I can either update it in the shop or just do a custom listing to make sure you get what you want to have. So, okay. Yeah. And um, Emmy, you said there's, there's a lot of things you're trying out. Um, is there any like new products or new product techniques that we can look forward to that you're going to be uh, debuting soon? We are actually, with our resin SLA printer, we are mm -hmm. actually looking into custom garage kits of original characters. So, 
I don't know, it's, we're kind of on the cusp of that right now, but we really want to be able to bring people, you know, people get figures of characters all the time, Yeah. but we want to do some original stuff, maybe some stuff That's that, going to be hard to do that at a right? price point that I think people are going to be yeah. too willing to shell out for, love, but it'll be super cool if you can figure out how to... Yeah, but they love, like, Evangelion and Gundam, like kits of the thing so I yeah. think if we if we really find that sort of niche we can do that but yeah that's on the horizon and awesome tons of other stuff and maybe one of these days I'll have enough time to finish one of my cosplays again <laughs> yeah I completely understand that all right, Emmy. Well, thank you so much for letting me interview you, you. The con is winding down here. I what? assume you've done well at the show. You, this is your this second has been year, a so great show for us. It's a great. It's a fine drive. We stayed at the Airbnb for the first time, which was great. It was yep. real chill. Uh, we get to see people that we know, and the artists here. Uh, we've met some new artists, and I've made some new contacts, and we'll be excited to come back. So, okay. well, thanks, Emmy. Um, I hope you have a safe trip home. Huh? I said I hope you have a safe trip home. Oh, thank you. Yes, y'all too. <laughs>